Hello Green Stylers, Cynthia here and today I have a sewing tutorial for you for the briny top. This clever asymmetrical one shoulder design provides both comfort and support. You can make your briny the original one shoulder version or you can add the optional extra strap. You can also choose between the regular flat front or the two inch full bust adjustment with darts. Whichever options you choose, you'll enjoy freedom of movement, whatever your activity, with this stylish and comfortable top. Briny was designed for swim fabrics and lining with at least 75% horizontal and 50% vertical stretch and good recovery. But we all loved it so much during testing that we wanted to wear it as an active wear top. If you want to make the briny with athletic performance fabrics, that's okay too, but we do suggest that you size up if your fabric has firm stretch and rebound. Now let's take a look at the pieces you'll need to cut to make your briny. For the front main, you'll choose between piece B1, the regular front main, or piece B3 that includes a 2 inch FBA and darts as shown here. Choose whether you want the large strap to go over your left shoulder or your right shoulder. If you cut with the pattern piece and the fabric both facing up, then your strap will end up on the right shoulder. If you turn either the fabric or the pattern piece face down, but not both, then your strap will end up on the left shoulder. And if you're a projector user like I am, fabric face up will result in a right shoulder strap and fabric face down will result in a left shoulder strap like I have here. Whichever shoulder you choose, just make sure that your cutting remains consistent throughout all of the pieces. Cut one front main piece and if you're using the extra strap, be sure to mark the placement marking on your fabric. Cut one back main piece labeled B2 and again if you're using the extra strap, mark that placement on your fabric. Cut one front liner piece, either L1 or L3 for the 2 inch FBA. Cut one back liner piece labeled piece L2. Cut one band C1 on the fold and choose between a 1 inch elastic or a 1 and a half inch elastic cut line. You'll also need to cut a piece of underbust elastic according to this chart which is on page 9 of the tutorial and as always stretch it around your body to test for comfort before committing it to your garment. If you're using the optional extra strap, cut one piece according to this chart also found on page 9 of the tutorial. Follow along here for the darts if you're using the FBA version, if not skip ahead to the shoulder seams. These darts are ridiculously quick and easy when stitched on the serger, but if you'd like to see them done on the sewing machine, I've done that before for the Arcadia and we'll add that link to the video description. Begin by folding the dart right along the point, aligning the two raw edges with right sides together and pin in place. Begin at the bottom of the piece and you're going to stitch using a 3 8 inch seam allowance a straight line right along that dart. Maintain that straight line 3 8 of an inch seam allowance from the dart edges and then continue stitching a straight line right off the edge of the fabric. And you will notice that to maintain that straight line you will pass the point of the dart. those stitches at the point of the dart, you can separate the needle and looper threads until you're almost to the fabric but not quite, and then knot them a few times, and that will lock your stitches in place. Another option would be to take that serger tail and thread it through a needle with a large eye, like I've done here. Then thread the needle back through your serger stitches and this will hold that tail in place so that none of the dart stitches fall out. Repeat these steps for the other dart on the front main piece and also both darts on the lining piece. We'll align the shoulder seams with right sides together and pin in place. Do this for both the main and also the lining pieces. Thank you. 
stitch using a stretch stitch or searcher in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Continue here for the optional extra strap or skip ahead to the strap seams. We'll begin by taking our strap piece and folding it in half along the long straight edge. Fold with right sides touching and on the inside of the fold. I'll be freehanding the fold as I stitch, but you can also pin or clip the entire strap. In addition, we'll be adding a length of half inch elastic to the seam as we stitch. So we'll have three layers, the two raw edges of fabric plus the one edge of elastic. And make sure that you add that elastic at a one-to-one -one ratio. You should not be stretching the elastic at all. Of course, if you are less experienced or feel more comfortable, you can stitch just the strap on its own and then come back and stitch the elastic to that seam using a stretch stitch or serger. Once it's stitched, you're going to turn the strap right side out. Bring over your front main piece Find the marking for the extra strap placement and you're going to take your strap and place it with the right side facing down so the seam of the strap should be facing up. Place it right on that mark and baste it into place. Place your main piece on the table with right side facing up. Bring over your lining piece and lay it on top with right side facing down so that right sides are together. Carefully adjust the fabric to line up the edge that includes the sharp curve on the back piece and pin in place. Now eventually this strap piece is going to come across and attach to the back piece and we know where that's going to happen because we've marked it on our fabric. You may find it helpful to add another visual cue for when this mark is coming up. Of course if you're not using the extra strap option you can just disregard the extra dot. We'll stitch this seam using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're using your sewing machine, you can stop stitching right before you get to your dot marking and leave about a half inch opening, then start stitching again on the other side of the dot. Since I'm using my serger, I don't want to try and serge off and back on again. I find it actually easier to just stitch straight through and then use a seam ribber to just open up a little half inch opening at that spot. And I'll show you how I do that in just a minute. Now before we deal with that dot in that little opening, we're going to add some quarter inch swim or clear elastic to the seam. We'll be adding the elastic to the seam that we just stitched, except for right around the sharpest part of the curve on that back piece. So in between these two clips here where that curve is very sharp, we're going to skip that spot. As we attach the elastic, we're going to use a stretch stitch. I like to use the number eight or zigzag stitch. We'll be attaching the elastic to the main fabric side of the seam at a one to one ratio, so no stretching. And we want to make sure that that elastic stays within the seam. So you don't want the elastic wandering off onto the top. You want it to stay right there in those seam stitches. I've gotten to my first clip marking, which indicates that I'm getting close to that sharp curve on the back. So I'm going to cut my elastic and I'm going to start stitching again past the other clip and I'm just going to leave that little corner elastic free. And if you're doing the extra strap, as you see that you're coming up to that dot marking, you want to stop stitching and leave a little bit of the elastic unstitched where that dot is. I'm actually going to be clipping my elastic, but in retrospect, I realized that was unnecessary. Um, all you have to do is stop stitching before the dot 
and then start stitching again immediately after the dot. And when you do it that way, the elastic will be perfectly in place for when you insert that strap and then close up the seam later on. Now if you used your sewing machine, you already have a little opening here at that dot, but if you search like I did, you'll use your seam ripper to snip the two needle threads. Mine are the black threads. So just snip two of the needle threads, and then where those little V openings are, you're going to use your seam ripper to pull out those needle threads, and that will release the looper threads. And I'm just going to open up just a little bit, maybe half an inch of stitches so now I have an opening big enough to stick my little strap through in a later step. And you can see how this would work just as well if I had not snipped that elastic. Now we'll pin this other side. You can see that the lining is more narrow than the main fabric, so you're going to want to lift and pull over the lining so that those raw edges line up perfectly. The reason that the lining is more narrow is so that when you're wearing the briny, the seam is getting pulled in toward your body, so the seam and the lining will not be showing as you wear your top. And if you're using the optional extra strap, it should be basted to your front bodice right about here and you're going to be stitching over it so just make sure that the rest of the extra strap is pulled out of the way as you stitch. And you'll add elastic to this seam in the exact same way that you did for the last seam. And here is where you previously basted the extra strap to the front bodice. Now it is stitched into that seam. Now we need to turn the whole thing right side out by reaching into the strap and pulling the back end all the way through. Once it's all right side out, we'll align these side seams. Open up the front main and lining so that both are facing right sides up on the table and the side seams are all exposed. And do the same with the back pieces. What we're going to do is lift up the back pieces and we're going to lay them on top of the front pieces so that the right sides are all touching. We have the right sides of the main touching each other and then we have the right sides of the lining touching each other. We're going to pin or clip these side seams all the way across both sides. Make sure to line up the seams where the lining meets the main and just pin that carefully. We'll stitch both of these side seams with a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. everything right sides out and we're finally going to deal with that little extra strap and insert it into the back. So the strap will cross over the main strap and be inserted into the back bodice. You can decide if you want the extra strap to go over or under the main strap. I'm going to go ahead and place mine over. Find the little opening and then slip it in. Make sure that your extra strap isn't twisted. Here's how it'll look from the outside, but the work we'll do to attach it will be from the inside. Find that seam with the little opening, and you're going to pull that strap out just a bit. I have it pulled out a little bit too much here, but just so that you can see it. You're going to line up that seam again, make sure your elastic is lined up, and you're going to baste it right across here. 
The reason that we based on the strap to start with is so that you can have an opportunity to try on the top and adjust the length if necessary. Keep in mind that the extra strap should be slightly shorter than the regular strap. And also when you try on the top, it may not come down as low as you expect, but keep in mind that the band that you'll be adding will pull and hold it down and the vertical stretch on your top will come into play so you'll need to stretch it down over your bust when you try it on. And once you're happy with your fit, use a stretch stitch or serger to securely stitch that seam in place and also to attach that elastic to the seam. The final step is to construct the band. Take your band piece and fold it in half, aligning the short edges with right sides together and pin in place. And we'll prep our elastic at the same time. Overlap the ends by one half inch and you can use a wide zigzag stitch or a straight stitch and just stitch in the shape of an X to secure that elastic. Stitch the band using a straight stitch in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Mark the quarter points on your band and then fold it in half lengthwise with the wrong sides together. Then slip the elastic into the band pushing it all the way up into the fold. Once the elastic is inserted into the band, you can either baste or clip around the band to hold those raw edges together. With the elastic inserted, the raw edges aligned and the quarter points marked, your band is now prepped to attach to the top. You may also find it helpful to baste the bottom edge of your top and lining together. Now mark the quarter points on your top by finding the center front and the center back, and then align those together to find the quarter points on the side. Just be aware that the side seams will not be quarter points. Decide which side of your band is going to be the right side because you'll want to align your band with right sides together on your top. Match up the back seam of the band with the center back of the top and pin the band to the top matching up all four quarter points. You can stitch in place with a basting stitch first if you like, but stretch stitch or serger for your permanent stitch and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And that's it, you are done. Congratulations on completing your very own green style briny top. Please be sure to share across social media and use hashtag GSBriny. We'd love to see your makes and look forward to hearing from you. Happy sewing from all of us at Green Style.